Welcome to the Miracles Happen Fertility Podcast, where it's all about using the power of your mind to create hope, health, and miracles on your fertility journey. And now your host, a dash of science and a heap of spirit, Dr. Maria Rothenberger. Hey, hey, welcome to episode 106 of the Miracles Happen Fertility Podcast. I am Dr. Maria Rothenberger, your host for the podcast, and am totally delighted that you are listening in today. Thanks for joining. And if you are on YouTube, thanks for tuning in there too. Today is audio only. However, if I do have an interviewee, which I am going to be having more of in the upcoming weeks, you'll see video as well on YouTube at the Miracles Happen Fertility Center. So go check that out if you are on a different listening platform. All right, today's topic, quantum fertility. What the heck does that mean? (laughs) Well, I'm going to be going through all of that over today's podcast. But first, just a few announcements, just a few happenings and goings on in the Miracles Happen Fertility world. First, This is April 2021, and every year in April, we have National Infertility Awareness Week. Now, I think that I have made the conscious decision to change that to National Fertility Awareness Week, and actually, that ties in nicely to quantum fertility, and I will talk more about that, of course, as we move on for today. So National Fertility Awareness Week is April 18th to April 24th this year, and you are welcome to use the coupon code that I've issued for 20% off everything in my fertility shop for that entire week, including big ticket things like very popular spirit baby sessions. Heads up, it is um, a little ways in the future to book a session with me. I'm looking, I think I'm booking about six to eight weeks out right now. However, If you book a session and you then email me at info at drmariarothenberger.com, I have a list that I can add you to. And honestly, right now, it's really short because I've been able to get some folks in. So uh, email me if you want to get in sooner and I can add you to that list. All right. So 20% off everything in the fertility shop from April 18th to April 24th, 2021. And the code is NFAW 2021, National Fertility Awareness Week 2021. And uh, you'll get 20% off absolutely everything in the shop. Good times, right? Way to party. All right. So that is one announcement. Another announcement I have is the release of April's meditation called Connecting to Your Greater Self. If you are a Patreon member, then you've already received a tier three. If you're a tier three Patreon member, then you've already received that meditation as part of your membership. Um, Every month you will get a new meditation, which is absolutely essential for your fertility. Meditation, meditation, meditation. You know, if you've listened to me before that I don't feel like I can stress that enough. So anyhow, you get that meditation free every month as part of your membership. If you have not, if you are not part of Patreon, uh, feel free to head on over to patreon.com slash miracles happen insider to get more information. The it's like a few dollars a month to sign up for membership and you can see all of the benefits that you get every month. P.S. There are some things that I can't list on Patreon because it's technically gambling, but I get, I give folks in different tiers more, um, uh, entries to, uh, giveaways and things like that when I do have them twice a year. And, uh, so you will automatically get that even though that's not listed. And I do give other fun giveaways too, for members, uh, that are not listed just because I feel like it during <laughs> during the year. Uh, If you know me, then you know that I like giving shit away. So that will happen too. Um, You also, if you are a Patreon member, have received April's Oracle card reading. That is for the entire month of uh, April, things that you personally need to be focusing on. You've also received a monthly skill. Um, I do a skill video. That's a short video, five to eight minutes or so of a skill that you can use to um, support you on your fertility journey. Um, And you get early release of these podcast episodes. So uh, you have 
already received this episode ahead of time uh, in advance than, you know, earlier than other folks. So uh, head on over again to patreon.com miracles happen insider um, to get more information around that. But to this month's episode, excuse me, this month's meditation release connecting to your greater self is exactly what it says. Um, when we feel at a loss of what to do, or we need, we feel like we need more assistance or more guidance than connecting to your greater self on a spiritual level. Um, it is believed that about a third of our consciousness is here on the planet with our bodies and the rest is still in the spiritual realm, helping guide us and help helping lead us. And that may be where part of intuition comes from. Um, but I think that especially in spirit baby work, I have found that connecting to one's greater self has been so useful for getting through and over and around the anxiety and the depression that comes with, uh, spirit baby stuff or, or trying to conceive or loss, um, getting through that and around that sort of filtering that out is so helpful for getting a sense of where someone is on their path and where they need to go next. Um, as you know, having, if you have worked with me, as you know, then you know that I, my goal is to empower people to do this work on their own. I don't think that you need anybody else. I think that if you have your own spirit baby, which we all do and we all can, um, and you have your own soul, which we all do, <laughs> then you can do this work on your own. And that's part of this meditation. So uh, anyway, if you want to know more, head on over to drmariarothenberger.com slash shop and you can pick up that meditation. And remember, during the week of National Fertility Awareness Week, you can get that meditation for 20% off. Brand new, hot off the presses. Okay, other announcements. What do I have for you? Let's see. Oh, yeah. If, if you are on my uh, monthly newsletter, and if you aren't, why not? Um, head on over to my website, drmariarothenberger.com, and uh, you can sign up right there on the front page there. Or if you pick up any of the free gifts, you'll be automatically added to my uh, newsletter. Obviously, I don't do spam, uh, detest spam. You'll not be getting any kind of spamming from me. Uh, however, if you just want to pick up free gifts or sign up with the newsletter to see what it's like, and then you're like, yeah, not for me, just unsubscribe. No biggie, no big deal. Um, but if you are on that monthly newsletter, it is the first Monday of the month. I release a newsletter that has links to all of the events and all the things that happened the month before and all of the upcoming things. So you have advanced awareness and can tune in to podcast releases or um, look into other things that I'll be doing throughout the year. Um, usually a month in advance is what the newsletter has in there. This is what's coming up in April, for example. So the first Monday of the month, there's a release there. And um, again, I don't bombard your inbox with with things. Um, the first few emails that come to you are uh, about a week apart. And then there's a monthly newsletter. All right. So, oh, last thing, Spirit Baby Foundations training. That's going to be starting in the summer of 2021, probably around August. And I've gotten a couple questions that I wanted to address. One, what is the pricing? That's a really big question, right? I'm still deciding and kind of finagling and seeing um, how much of my time is going to be um, used or, or accessed in terms of creating this and spending time with you. And so I am looking at pricing, but if you sign up for information um, on the uh, website, then you will get an automatic discount. Uh, so drmariarothenberger.com slash spirit baby training. And it's just a basic page right now just to sign up for more information. I will be sending out emails giving specific information. So everything that is included in that training and what it's going to look like. It is an eight, I know it's an eight week series. I know it's intimate. It's rather small group of folks and there's going to be a way to connect with one another and there's going to be a way to connect individually with me. So you'll be doing actual practical work, both in groups and with myself so that you can fine tune your own ability to connect with spirit baby realm. The other question that I got was, um, 
does this help me connect with other folks, spirit babies, because I don't necessarily need to connect with mine, but I want to help my clients or I want to help other people. The answer is absolutely, if that's a word, it's now a word. Um, yes, yes, absolutely. All of the skills that you will learn, very practical, useful skills are ones that you can use to access spirit baby realm. That means your own spirit baby. And that means that of others. Um, we will be talking in depth about how to do that. So, and, and it's normal to feel a little nervous and anxious about this in the beginning, especially when you're not used to accessing your um, own gifts, your own Claire gift. Uh, but we will address that too. We'll be, we'll be addressing all of that. Uh, I just had some fun sessions with clients around connecting to their own spirit babies. And I'm there with them saying, ah, oh, yes, yes. And do you feel this? And do you pick up on that? And they're like, oh my God, what? I didn't even know. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, you are connecting. Yes. Actually, I had a client um, email me recently. Um, is my spirit baby stalking you? Because I just, for whatever reason, woke up today thinking, you know, that that's happening. And I'm like, oh shit. Yes. <laughs> They're not stalking me. They were just present with me that morning, not saying anything. They were just present with me. And I was like, see, you are totally connecting, you know? So anyway, uh, Spirit Baby Foundations training. I absolutely, I can't wait. I think it's going to be such a blast. Uh, and I will be doing a webinar actually associated with Spirit Baby Training uh, sometime in July. So you can look forward to that as well. Okay, I think that's it for the announcements. I've bombarded you with enough, enough information around that. How about quantum fertility? Let's talk about that. Okay, first a definition. What does quantum fertility mean? So I like the definition. I'm going by a book that I that has been on my shelf for years. And I reference it. I go back to it every now and again, because I just think it's phenomenal. It's by Kathy Freston. That's F like Frank, R-E-S like Sam, T like Tom, O-N like Nancy. It's called quantum wellness. And she talks, I love her definition. Okay. So when we talk about quantum physics, we're talking about tiny unseen particles and waves. So the way that she talks about quantum wellness is in the tiny, tiny movements and changes that we make in our life to promote our wellness. And that's how I'm going to be framing fertility today. So everything that we talk about, and generally speaking in the Western um, treatment or Western philosophy around bio biology, it is truly all about matter. It's just, it's simply biology, which is of course a big deal, right? So we want to feed ourselves well, we want to exercise, these kinds of things. Um, but I, it's not the entire picture. And this is why I really enjoy this topic of quantum fertility. So like tiny little things, some unseen things, which are quite spiritual, mind, body, spirit, mind, body, soul, which is my bag, right? That's exactly what my website says, <laughs> balancing mind, body, soul, wellness for optimal fertility. So I'll be talking about that today. Now, I wanted to read from this book, uh, Quantum Wellness by Kathy Freston, um, a little snippet so you get an idea of where we're going today. She says, as you embark on a journey toward quantum wellness, you can count on two things. One, as you increase your knowledge of what it is to be well, everything that is, quote, not well will reveal itself. You will be more readily able to identify that which needs your attention. This is really important, okay? Um, this is me speaking. This is really important, and it's related to what I was referring to or, or alluding to before about National Fertility Awareness Week and not National Infertility Awareness Week. Okay, number two you will find within you the ability to bring light to all those places that are wounded or unenlightened so that you can experience magnificent multi-dimensional wellness. Wow. I, I just feel like that sentence is so beautiful. And it's exactly how I feel about fertility too, because fertility is not just the body. Fertility is mind. It is emotion. It is soul. It's everything. It's creation at its core. And so when you address all of these parts of you, then you're able to really illuminate and enlighten is the word that she used, enlighten those areas of yourself that 
were void of light. And then she says, you see, the path of wellness is a path of transcendence. Okay. You know that I wrote a book. If you don't know, then here's the info. I wrote a book called Transcending Infertility. And so when I read that sentence, I grinned from ear to ear because transcending infertility is not just about being more fertile. It's about transcendence. It's about being better because of the fertility issues. It's being better because of all of the things that go along with it, relationship issues, work problems, feeling less than, feeling um, stuck, all of those gross things that you feel, you can transcend them. And it's, that's what, that's what transcending infertility is about. And so when she wrote that, I'm, I'm just grinning like crazy. She says, you will constantly be brought to the walls that keep you stuck and you will be challenged to overcome them. You will become more attuned to all the wonder and grace at work in the world today, the miraculous cures, the everyday heroes who have stepped out of their comfort zone. Sorry, I had to turn a page and made a difference. The stories of human kindness that would melt any heart. I mean, come on, we need to live in a world like that, right? Don't you want to live in a world like that? Well, if you want to live in a world like that, it starts with you, my friend. It starts with you, especially if you are kind to yourself. You can start right here with quantum fertility, and this is what we're going into. I'm using, I'm adapting um, her, Kathy Freston's eight pillars of wellness to uh, fertility. So I'll be talking about these eight pillars within the context of fertility. The eight pillars are meditation, shocker visualization, fun activities, conscious eating, exercise, self-work, spiritual practice, and service. Let's start with meditation. Now, if you need any more information around why I feel like meditation is absolutely essential to your fertility, just listen to every episode in the Miracles Happen Fertility podcast. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> basically, basically, um, no meditation. I mean, we, we already know mindfulness specifically, uh, mindfulness is a specific type of meditation. We already know, um, scientifically and many other types of meditation, but I'm, I'm mostly aware of mindfulness and, um, trained in mindfulness. We already know scientifically how meditation, mindfulness meditation works in terms of um, engaging your parasympathetic nervous system and helping rewire your brain. Suffice it to say that fertility issues are traumatic. And when you have a traumatic experience, your brain is changed and it is hyper aware and it is, oh my God. I just reread a, par- a portion of Transcending Infertility and I, I, for, for another thing that I was doing. And I just had this image in my mind of that experience. And I don't have the same emotional response anymore because I've worked so much through that. But the image is still so there. And of course, it was, of course it was intense at the time. It, I give yourself permission to feel the intense emotions is what I'm saying, because this shit is hard. That's an understatement. Meditation, specifically mindfulness, can absolutely help you feel less intense about these traumatic experiences. When it comes to fertility, everything that we experience in our everyday life, it can be triggering relationships with other people, signs on the highway. For me, it was like babies are us or the, I often reference the baby aisle at Target. Some people don't have those triggers. I absolutely did. Triggered by um, pregnant women walking by me, you know, wondering, did they have to go through the same thing that I did? Or probably not. You know, I'm probably the only one. That's where my thoughts went, which is really, really difficult. When you 
practice mindfulness, you're able to reground yourself and not be in your thoughts all the time. You're able to notice the, the, the world around you and how there are lots of parts of your life that are actually okay. Maybe not stellar and amazing, but they're actually okay. And if you can get to that okay space, you are ahead of the game. Because generally speaking, when we are not mindful, when we are caught up in our thoughts, we are living in the world of what if, and not what if in a good way, what if in a bad way, what if this fail cycle, a cycle fails, what if I miscarry, what if I'm never a parent, what if my partner leaves me, what if, friggin' A, we can go down the what if path forever. When you are mindful, you come out of what if and you stay firmly in the present. And that is hard (laughs) and it requires training. This is why I absolutely recommend a daily meditation practice. Now, does it need to be sitting on a meditation cushion chanting OM? No, 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 no. My husband has a magnet on the refrigerator in the garage that says, you've never seen a motorcycle parked outside a therapist's office. (laughs) Now, I don't know if that's true and I don't, and it would not be a bad thing at all, motorcycle enthusiasts, but my husband's therapy is hopping on the motorcycle and taking off. That's what he does and it works. That's his meditation. He's fully present in the moment, feeling the wind in his face, noticing the traffic around him, making his turns, checking his speed, whatever it is that it takes to ride a motorcycle, that is his mindfulness meditation. It does not matter what yours is. All that matters is that you freaking do it. Okay, that's pillar number one. Pillar number two, visualization. Now, I've talked about visualization a lot, and many of my meditations are guided with visualization. Why is visualization important? Okay, when you visualize the image is not nearly as important as the emotion that you tie to the visualization. So a while back, I think in November, yeah, in November in my newsletter, before the launch of my book, I sent out an email that had Jim Carrey in it. And Jim Carrey was being interviewed by Oprah Winfrey. And he was talking about before he became like ultra famous, that he uh, wrote himself a check for like $10 million. And he visualized producers wanting to work with him and directors wanting to work with him and making $10 million in a movie and this and that. And he would visualize it like every day. And he would say to himself, that's out there. I just, it's, I haven't gotten a hold of it yet. And he would visualize all of this being called by various people and then getting hired for $10 million to do work on a movie. And he wrote this check and kept it in his wallet. And he said it was deteriorating and deteriorating. And um, he wrote it for like Thanksgiving of a certain year. And just before Thanksgiving of that year, he got a call that he was going to be making $10 million on um, Dumb and Dumber or something. And that's like a beautiful picture of how this visualization works. However, the visualization of being called by directors and this and that was not nearly as important as the emotion. When you, f- when you picture your life the way that you want it to be and you have the emotions around that, that is what the universe listens to. That is manifestation. In fact, if you uh, go to my shop and um, choose to pick up a personal meditation, that's a meditation where I get information from you around your own visuals and create your personalized guided meditation. When you get that, there are visuals in there that are designed to elicit an emotional response. It's the visuals don't matter nearly as much as your emotional response. All that matters or what matters most is the emotion around it. Very intense, beautiful emotion is what is how the universe speaks. That is manifestation. So that's why pillar number two, visualization for your fertility. We, we talk about how, what your end game is when you look at, um, how you want your family to be structured, how you want it to look, how you want you know, a specific thing, let's say all your dreams have come true and you're just like in a normal day with your new family, what does that look like? 
Then you ask yourself, what does that feel like? Now, what actually manifests not may not be precisely what you visualize. That is okay. And it won't matter because the emotions are the same. The emotions are absolutely the same and you'll be stunned and happy and joyful. And there will be a moment of, oh yeah, of course I feel this way because that's what I've been putting out there. It's so cool. Pillar number three, fun activities. Now, in transcending, if you might not even think that this is important, but in transcending infertility, I actually talk about this as an actual exercise to do. I feel like it's in quiet. The desperation is the name of the chapter. I think it is. That's one of the activities that I put in there to do, or one of the exercises to do is to name uh, several things, at least like, I think I put like one to three things that you can commit to doing over the next 30 days or the next week. However, I structured it in the book and write it down and commit to doing that thing. You know why? Because when we are bogged down in the fertility beast, freaking nothing is fun anymore, or it feels like nothing is fun anymore. So scheduling in and committing to having some fun that is not baby making related, super freaking important for balance. You need it. It engages your parasympathetic nervous system when you're in a chill place. It engages your sympathetic nervous system in a positive regard, which we could tell in a heart math graph. If you've heard me talk about heart math before, um, then you'll know what that means. If not, eh, we'll, we'll talk about that a different time. <laughs> but we, you can tell when you're in a positive affect, when you're in a positive mood, whether it's a super excited thing, like you're going skiing or something like that, or a really chill thing, like you're having a glass of wine by the fire. Any way you do it, please have some fun. Very important. Okay. Pillar number four, conscious eating. Now, I need to preface this by saying I am not a nutritionist, I am not a physician, I am not a nurse, I am not anything related to how to eat, okay? But I can say that it's super important when you are eating for your fertility to pay attention to what your body needs. Pay attention. It's so important. And you can do this by accessing your intuition, by accessing that part of you that knows exactly what you need. You can even do like muscle testing. Uh, you can use a pendulum to decide what to put into your body. And we will be talking about these kinds of things, by the way, in Spirit Baby Foundations training, how to actually do those things. But conscious eating, your body already knows what to eat or what to consume or what it needs. And when you ask it, when you are conscious about it, then it will tell you it's subtle and you'll have to learn how to tap into those subtle energies. And it requires a bit of stillness, which is where meditation comes in. Um, again, another reason why meditation is important. But when you tap into that, super useful. I just did that this morning. When I said, okay, what am I going to have for breakfast? I can have a smoothie or I can make some scrambled eggs and throw some veggies in there. And instead of just going for something, I actually paused. I created a pause and said, okay, body, what do you need today? And so I ended up making um, a pepper scramble with eggs because my body was like, yeah, that feels better. And how I did that, I imagined eating the, the scramble and then I imagined eating um, or drinking a smoothie and I determined which one felt a little better. And it was the eggs. There you go. That's what you do. It's super simple, but you tap into subtle energy. And when you practice doing that, you can know in an instant whether or not you need to have that thing. This goes for um, junk food as well. And this is what I really want to say. There's so much cutting out. There's so much deprivation when we're on the fertility journey. Can't have this, can't have that. Am I right? And oh boy, did I ever do that. It was no coffee. It was no alcohol. It was none of that. You can do that when you feel compelled to like have a glass of wine or a beer or whatever, or a cup of coffee or that sugary treat. You ask your body, body, what do you think? How do you feel about that? And you imagine yourself um, depriving yourself of that, like not having that. And then you imagine yourself having that thing and feel what your body does. I did this recently with, oh gosh, what was it? 
oh, I don't even remember, but I'm not a sugar fan. So it was probably something savory and it was like not or salty and it, it wasn't like a healthy thing. And I asked my body if, if it was like, okay, what do you think? Is that an okay thing to do right now? And my body was like, nah, don't indulge today or don't indulge this time. It's fine. And I didn't, I was like, okay, glass of water for me or whatever. Um, you know, chewing on some carrots or something else that I really like. Um, all right. So that's conscious eating pillar. Number four, pillar number five, exercise. Again, prefacing this by saying I am not um, an exercise physiologist. I'm not a physician. I'm not any of that. I can, however, speak again to accessing your intuition here. I've referenced this client before who is now happily in Utah with um, her baby and may have another one on the way. I'm not sure. Or maybe she has a second already. Um, Haven't spoken to her in a while, but she's an avid runner. And we talked at length about her um, exercise habits while trying to get pregnant. Now, her physicians were saying, absolutely do not. No, 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 no running, no running, no, 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 walking only. You can only walk the dog. So now she felt deprived, and that creates a whole host of chemistry in her body. Um, It wasn't working for her. So she began to gently run or run shorter distances. And then just before she had her transfer, or maybe it was right after her transfer, I don't remember when, when it was, she said, you know, Maria, I actually, I just, for whatever reason, I just feel like I need to stop running now. I'm like, great. Listen to that. Listen to that. And that resulted in a, um, successful cycle. But I think it's really important, you know, when you take information in from other, um, uh, well-qualified professionals, it's, it's fine to disagree with them and really listen to your body. Even the things that I say, please take what resonates with you and discard the rest gently, lovingly discard it. You don't have to say, oh, that's bullshit or anything like that because that creates another host of chemistry in you that you don't want. You just say, oh, all right, that doesn't fit me. That's fine. I'll move on to something else. And you are allowed to do that because a physician or myself, we go by what we see in general and, and statistics and we look at what actually works for the whole, for general people. You are not that. You are an individual and you get to choose what to do with your body. Okay, that was pillar number five, exercise. Pillar number six, self-work. Okay, now having a PhD in psychology, I think I can talk about that. <laughs> self-work. What does self-work means? Uh, of what does self-work mean? So self-work is all about being aware of you. It's being aware of your internal processes. It's being aware of your external processes, your external behavior as a result of your internal processes. Now let's just narrow this down to the fertility world. When you inside have a trigger to something, you have to determine what to do with that. If you have my book, Transcending Infertility, there's a chapter in there. Or if you don't have it, obviously pick it up. It's on Amazon, number one bestseller, or you can get it on my website for 20% off. Oh my God, there you go. 20% off on my website during National Fertility Awareness Week. And I will, bonus, I will sign it for you and put a little love note in there. Um, So when you, um, there's a chapter in there called um, Infertility Masks. I talk about masks because... Uh, that was I, that was written before COVID nineteen. Okay, <laughs> before the mask thing was a phenomenon. When you're dealing with fertility issues, it's really easy to pretend that all is well, that all is okay, and you even get good at pretending to yourself. Self work is the awareness around that. Is the awareness that oh, I'm actually really upset right now, and I cannot do that thing. I need to set a limit here. I am really upset about this upcoming baby shower. I think I need to say no. Or I've said yes to this baby shower and it's and I was feeling okay about it, but I've just had a failed cycle and the baby shower is tomorrow. I'm feeling really shitty today. I think I need to say that I, I can't go and I will send a gift. What, whatever that is for you, I call that taking off the fertility, the infertility mask and really being your authentic self. And that is the self work. Now, of course, 
there's so much more to that. And I have nine keys written just in transcending infertility. But that is the basics, being aware of what's happening inside you so that you can come to your external behaviors more educated and more accepting of what's happening inside you. Now, I give an example um, in Transcending Infertility about how people can be so different who are experiencing the fertility struggles. My a really close friend of mine was not triggered at all by baby showers or baby stores or anything like that. She was fine. She would plan a baby shower. It was completely okay. And I was in awe of her. Like, how could she do that? I would just walk in front of a baby store and start crying. I let alone walk in. I actually tried walking in to baby store to, uh, to a baby store to shop for somebody and I left bawling because I couldn't, I couldn't stay in there. So everybody is different. We're all on a spectrum here. There is no wrong. However, you're responding to your particular experience is right. It is okay. And you get to choose what to do with that behaviorally. That is the self-work. It's this constant awareness of what's happening inside you so that you can choose well behaviorally. Okay, that is pillar number six, self-work. Pillar number seven, spiritual practice. Okay, there's been a lot of spiritual talk um, without using the word spiritual. I like to use the word energy, energy practice. Um, spiritual can feel a little religious for some folks, although there are some others that say, oh, I'm not religious. I'm just really spiritual. Whatever word you choose, <laughs> we're talking about the world of the unseen here, the, the, the world of non-matter, things that we can't um, measure in a beaker or something, right? We're talking about the world of the unseen. So we're talking about um, energy. Um, and that is for, for you, it could be nature, you know, and nature is measurable, but how you respond to it and how you feel in it is not necessarily that measurable. You just know you feel great and stable and secure and grounded when you are in nature. It could be a religious practice. It could be showing up to church every week or going to a, um, a scripture study group or something like this. It could be anything of your choosing that fills you up inside. You're looking to um, improve your vibration. So I like to talk again in, in terms of energy, but whatever words make sense to you, okay? There's actually a book called um, 365 Ways to Increase Your Vibration. And that is a great book for looking at ways to boost your energy, to boost your vibration, to have a spiritual practice. Your spiritual practice could be your meditation. It could be yoga. It could be anything that you, um, that you subscribe to that is outside of yourself that you can lean on. That could be, um, your greater self, you know, and that's, gosh, a perfect month to pick up that meditation, uh, connecting to your greater self, because that is a spiritual practice. Um, it could be shamanism. It could be talking to your priest, or it could be talking to a clergy member of some kind. It does not matter. The only thing that matters is how you feel about it. But when you are working toward a more fertile being, a more fertile way of living, spirituality is so important. You're feeding your soul. You are um, brightening up. And if I were to take a look at your chakra system, I would be able to tell if your spiritual practice is effective in that moment. You can literally, I mean, you subjectively can feel it. You can absolutely feel it in your body and in your psyche, in your emotions. I would be able to see it in your energy system. I could see, oh yeah, look at here, third chakra, really bright, beautiful color, um, beautifully packaged chakra in a perfect little sphere, um, not too large, not too small. Um, this is, that's not something I can measure scientifically. Although I have to say there is a device now, this is such a tangent. There is a device now that looks at chakra alignment. I'm wondering if I can 
get more information on that and interview somebody around that. It's super freaking cool. Anyway, spiritual practice, that is pillar seven, really important to be able to engage in something like this that has meaning for you. That's probably the key word here, something that creates meaning in your life around your experiences. Okay, pillar number eight, service. Now, one word of caution here, service means helping others. Okay. At, you know, basic definition, a word of caution here. If you have not served yourself first, how many times have I mentioned this, right? If you haven't filled your own cup or you can't pour from an empty cup, if you do not take care of yourself first, it is very difficult to serve other people. So please begin by taking care of yourself. If you want actual spiritual work around this, haha, pillar number seven, you can go to the YouTube, my YouTube channel, Miracles Happen Fertility Center, and work the compassion series that I have recorded there. It was recorded for the year of 2020. And I started in January, not even knowing that the pandemic was on its way. Um, but it begins with self-compassion work. And you'll, you'll hear me talk in there about how important it is to first have self-compassion so that you can give others compassion. And compassion is at the root of service, is it not? So please, that's your word of caution. Please take care of yourself first, and then you'll see how easy it is to take care of other people. And service coming from a place of having a full cup already is incredibly useful for your spiritual practice, for your body, for your mind, for your emotions, all of these pillars work together. There, there's, it's not like they're totally delineated or separate or mutually exclusive from another. They all work together and service is a big one. So service, actually, when we talk about spiritual practice, my work by itself, you know, here I am serving you, that fills me up inside also because I take care of myself first, right? I set healthy limits and boundaries. And then I'm like, whoo, I'm ready to come out and like serve my people. And and here you are listening to this podcast and I'm serving you. And it's phenomenal. It's wonderful to do that. I feel so good. <laughs> but I first take care of myself and you need to do that too. So if you can find ways to first take care of you, when you feel like, okay, I'm ready to give a little bit to other people, begin to do so in small doses, okay? In whatever way is meaningful for you. It doesn't have to even be, it doesn't have to be fertility related. It doesn't have to be human related. You could be fostering dogs or something. Whatever it means for you to provide service is what's really important. Okay, so that is it, my friend. Eight pillars of quantum fertility I hope that this has been useful for you and may you go forward and use every single pillar in there. If you have any questions around it or don't know how to move forward with any of what I've said, please contact me, drmariarothenberger.com. You can just click on the contact me page and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Usually within 48 hours, I get back to my emails, um, personally. Um, and generally I do, if you haven't heard back from me in like a week, try again, I do get to my emails, um, at least once a week. So, but usually within 48 hours. Okay. My friend, thank you for joining in today. If you enjoyed content from this podcast episode today, please consider subscribing, consider leaving a rating, either just the stars or with a little written message too. I love reading what you folks have to say. And please let me know if you have any ideas for upcoming topics for the Miracles Happen Fertility Podcast. Contact me, please. Again, drmariarothenberger.com. And you can just click on contact, send me a message. Until next time. I am thinking about you. I am wishing you quantum fertility. I am wishing you epic, beautiful growth and change on your journey and all the good with the bad. 
and taking all the bad and saying, how can I make this useful? Or how can I just create an okayness around this rather than getting stuck in that debris and the darkness? Wishing you quantum fertility, wishing you a beautiful, happy, gorgeous life. And until next time, be well.